In this session, I am going to show you how at the time of defining a structure itself, you can declare different type of structure variables. Along with that, I am going to show you how you can access or refer to these individual members through these particular variables and also a program to read and print elements from a structure. So here what I have done is I have declared struct employee with these information or these particular information which I have been using again and again. Now what I have done in the definition of this struct employee, I have already declared two variables emp1, emp2. So emp1 and emp2 will have memory allocated to them because they are going to be variables of this particular type of structure. So emp1 is going to have all this information storage capability. emp2 is also going to have all these columns information storage capacity. So till this point, the struct employee does not allocate any memory space. The definition merely provides the blueprint prototype or model as an architect provides a blueprint for the house you are building. The semicolon must follow the last declaration of these two variables, not after this. So after you declare two variables, then you should have the semicolon. Now, it is important to understand the definition of the structure should come before you create variables of this type or before the main function or before you use the structure variables for the first time. You cannot have this definition later on and then use these variables first. No, you have to create the definition and then use the variables like any other normal variables in C++. So the declaration of the structure variable always comes after the definition. So if you see the declaration definition is here and then the declaration of two structure variables comes after the definition of the structure model prototype or the blueprint. The structure variable emp1 and emp2 is allocated memory space so that emp1 can store id number, name, designation and salary. emp2 also can store id number, name, designation and salary. Now let us take a look how we can refer or how we can access the individual members. Normally if it was simple int id number I could directly say id number but now I can only refer them through emp1 or emp2. So let's take a look at it. So the member of a structure is a part of this emp1 and it does not have its existence on its own. There is nothing called id number. It has a value because it belongs to emp1. So we cannot refer directly to id number, name, designation and salary. Now the member of a structure can be accessed using the dot operator. For example, if I want to refer to id number from emp1, I can say emp1 dot id number, emp1 dot name, emp1 dot designation, emp1 dot salary. Same if that this group belongs to emp2, then I need to say emp2 dot id number, emp2 dot name, emp2 dot designation, emp2 dot salary. So let's take a look at the general syntax. It is the structure variable name. What is the structure variable name? EMP1. Dot is as it is. Member name happens to be either salary, name, ID number or any of these stuff. So the structure member, so take a look at it. Take a look at it example. So we may access members as EMP1.name or EMP.2.salary. EMP1.name is completely different from EMP2.name. They are two different memory locations. There are two different variables. The structure member is accessed using three parts. First is the name of the structure variable. What is the name of the structure variable? EMP1. Then the dot operator. Member is name or salary. Alright. So the dot operator is known as the member access operator. Now what we shall do is let us try to take a look at a small program and try to understand how do we read or how do we input and display information from a structure. Just as we read in normal variables, it would be a good idea to understand how do we read and display information from a structure. So I'm using the normal header files. I have declared or oh sorry, I have defined a structure student with these particular fields or members. And I have created a structure variable called as st. st is a variable which has the following members. 
So when I ask the user to enter the register number, I just say C in st dot register number. That means it is referring to st dot register number. Name, I am referring it as st dot name. What will be combination? It will be st dot combination. What will be the percentage? It will be st dot percentage. So this is the way you access or refer to the individual members of the structure. Now, how do you print them? Similarly, just using the dot operator. So if you want to print the register number, you just use the cout st dot register number. Name st dot name. What is combination? st dot comb. What is the percentage? st dot prc. And finally, this is return zero to end the program. So take a look at this carefully. I have first defined the structure prototype or model. I have then declared or created a variable of this particular model called st and into st which has memory and the following members I am storing these data into st. So I hope this gives you an idea of how to read data into a structure and how to print data from a structure.